On the show this week, we've got some new bikes from Santa Cruz, Uno, some fresh paint jobs from Nuke Proof, and there's a Blake Samson. Oh, it's me, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the tech set. I feel Don't very be scared. scared. Don't be scared. Okay, this week, I've done this for you, actually, Blake. Ooh, okay. Um, because I know you like fast cars, fast bikes. You just bought a motorbike, haven't you? I've bought motorbikes. I've gone motorbikes. Cleaning like, out uh, some yeah. rust out of it. Yeah, I've been basically. cleaning rusts and getting all tech on motorbikes. Yeah. When yeah. it comes to bicycles, I just ride them. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You stay on GMBN, <laughs> I'll stay on tech. Um, and so, but I thought, seeing as you like fast things, I noticed uh, that Lamborghini have put out a little teaser trailer on their Instagram and YouTube. Go and check it out. Watch this. Lamborghini, it's on mm -hmm. road, mm -hmm. then it goes off road, Look. starts making some angry noises Look. around gravel tracks. That just bring, that just sends shivers down my spine. <laughs> you like that? All those rock chips and that little paint and the nice car. <laughs> no. but it was actually pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't Can't. care about the paint. Like, they I should have used the, S, uh, the, S, uh, the SUV one, not mm. that one. Ah, oh, well, what do you think? Do you think they're going to bring out, is, is this like them bringing out a Lamborghini rally team? Oh. Are they just, are they going to pair, now we saw an Orbea Rallon in this video mm. with a lady sort of racing it. Yeah. Maybe they're going to pair up somehow, Ooh, make snap. a collab. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe. it's just a, a team, I don't know, maybe they're showing off, but they are saying that something's coming. And it got me thinking, what else have we seen in the automobile world that has collabed with cars? Badly well, or I've, not badly. Well, recently, the other day, I spotted, well, just not so long ago, it was the Porsche. Yes. They've just brought this out. Yeah, uh, check this out. Look at that. That. You like it? Mm, yeah, it's nice. It's like a sort of a futuristic urban thing yeah. going on there. Don't think it'll do well on the dirt. Maybe if you put like a gravel fork on it. Mm. Oh, you're into that now. You see, I've yeah, seen those I've got uh, a Fox. Fox fork for my gravel bike. Yeah. Nick proof digger, <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Looking forward to see what you do on that. And then we've got something from Polestar, which is an e uh, electric car uh, company. Uh, check this out. The photos look really good. I'm liking this. They've got the uh, basically alley bike. They wanted to pair together because they're both a Swedish brand. Mm -hmm. And Polestar wanted something super Swedish. And they've come up with a non electric electronic downcountry bike. They've got a white paint job that's matching that car and the limited edition um, Olins on the front there, painted gold, which I think are matching the um, the brake calipers on the car. So that's some, mm. some small I do like the details. Pulsar. They are, do you like I, them? I like them, yeah. What I do, do you like, like them. about them? Oh, it's just it's the future, it's electric, I like yeah. it. If that or a um, or the obvious choice would be a Tesla, but mm, yeah, I don't maybe. know, your e e car's coming, they're, they're there this to is, stay. This is a nice looking car, i got to say. Um, and then Rottweild partnered up with Mercedes AMG, uh, brought out a carbon frame with carbon 29er wheels, Shimano Di2. Oof. Look at this thing, it is fully rigid. I mean, it's going to be as fast and as stiff as an AMG itself, it isn't it? Is. Which I, <laughs> I know which that. one I would go with. You know, what? AMG? I'd go with the AMG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, have you driven one? <gasps> I have just C63, but uh, yeah, not. Not yeah, that crazy one. Uh, no, I've not been in one of those, but same. I've ridden an AMG, and they're harsh. Yeah, they're, it's a harsh but fast drive, mm -hmm. isn't it? Well, this next one, right, is going to blow your mind. Okay, it's Bugatti, the Bugatti Veyron Ooh. or the Bugatti Range. Two point five million for a car. Bargain. But then there's a bike to come with it that depend on what kind of colour scheme you would go with. You can match your city bike. Oh wow! Right, that comes in at fifty five thousand dollars. Bargain. If you're spending two and a half million, oh, it's like million, 50 quid, isn't it? It's like whatever. <laughs> it's pocket running. I'll buy one of those. That one of them for my, my wife and me. Yeah. The sea yeah, sucker on the roof. <laughs> so it's a sub five kilo mm. um, fixie. Fix, Flat bar yeah, I know. fixie, isn't it? Basically, fifty five k. You don't get gears. You get one brake. Fifty five <laughs> for fifty five grand. Bargain. Absolute bargain. <laughs> I want to come on and take this bargain. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get a couple of those to test, shall we? Yeah, we yeah. should. And then moving the over to the motorbike world, um, there was the Ducati uh, e-bike. 
It was a 650B downhill e-bike. Uh, naturally, it's got Olin suspension and Pirelli tyres. Obviously, say naturally aspirated, but uh, uh, it's a e-bike. What, what are you saying about this? What are you I'm a big fan of Ducati in are general. You? The motorbikes, yeah, I love the engine. Sounds great. Comes with Olin's. Oh, I like it. I don't know how it rides. Yeah, who knows how it how it does. If you had a Ducati Corsa e-bike in your garage and you had a Ducati Panigale limited edition, you know what? I think I think electronic downhill bikes makes a lot of sense. Ah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I like it with Pirelli tires. That's full like road on the dirt. And then a little something in our size. We've got oh, these. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> these, these are brilliant. I this, like these. This is the Marquez brothers have partnered up with Mondraker yeah. uh, to make a uh, well a balance bike, off-road balance bike, and this one's got 250 watt throttle motor in it as well. Now I've actually seen kids at races and at motocross tracks just whizzing around on really? these little things. They're getting their balance sorted yeah. already, going over the little jumps and stuff at the age of two and three. How much are they? Yeah. Get one uh, for my little man. I don't know actually. Christmas is coming. I think ask Santa. My, yeah, ask Santa how ask much Santa they are. First, yeah. I, I don't know the price on that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, so there's a few of our favourites. Have we missed any? Let us know down in the comments below. And if there's a brand you want to see a collab on, mm -hmm. right? want to see a collab on someone. With Bugatti. Yeah. <laughs> on maybe. Ducati, I mean. Not. <laughs> or Bugatti, don't we? Yes, matter. either of the two. Let us know down in the comments below. We'd love to hear that fantasy combo. Okay, in the news, my first piece is actually from Instagram where Intend have dropped their new techie fork. So uh, have a look at this on screen. Now, it, this is just a teaser. They're not telling us what the techie side is, although they are saying it's limited to only five pieces. Um, it's already sold out and it's got the new uh, linear zer. Uh, I'm probably linearizer, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Uh, triple chamber air spring in there, which is probably what starts off the techie side to it. But they're already a pretty techie fork anyway, because basically you can buy these and adjust the um, travel on them by 10 mils and uh, in your own workshop. Oh. Choose what you like. You can choose your axle diameters as well. You can change those up and your brake mounts as well. So it's pretty versatile fork. They're trying to pitch it at a lifetime fork that you can change no matter what you know bike you're putting it on. Um, but it just looks pretty, doesn't it? What it do you think? It does look very nice. They've yeah. gone for less is more. Five yeah. pieces. Only five pieces and they're already sold out. They've not even told us what it is or how much it costs and five people have bought it already. Wow. <laughs> they do look but beautiful. But it is don't they? pretty. You've got a black body on the black stanchions with a what looks like a hand polished crown, which is just stunning. What do you think? Very tacky. Well good. Um, and then new Uno Dash. Now you're a big fan of Uno, aren't you? I do like an Uno. They, I think they're quite a unique bike in itself. Mm. But what I got told by the guy behind the camera, <laughs> Matt, he said the guy who designed that helped design the TRX, or the Gas Gas, then the TRX, yeah. and then he helped do the Mondraker as well. So you kind of can see yeah. a trial, trail, or trials-esque kind of motorbike Absolutely. frame kind of looking thing and the real skinny line on that top I tube. I know, yeah, so check this out. Area. Check this out on screen right now. It is very similar to their previous burn um, and it does have that gas does gas look, trials yeah. look and that sort of Mondi skinny top tube look. Um, but this one is an extra bit of travel. You've got 150 up front, 140 up rear. It's a 29er. Um, and it's basically supposed to be for trail smashing, mm -hmm. and it comes in three sizes. They're not saying small, medium, or large. It is basically S1, S2, or S3. Choose whatever reach you want. So yeah, pretty pretty good. And then over in Santa Cruz, they seem to be updating their entire lineup, don't they, at the moment? <laughs> and they've just dropped the new Nomad. So uh, check this out. Um, it comes in any color you want, as long as it's black or gray. Uh, it's the sixth edition, 170 mil front and rear mullet only. Now you're mullet not a fan only. of mullet, are you? No, I'm not a fan of mullet. No, oh, you, you get it. It's like marmite to me. Mm. I love marmite, but I don't like mullet. <laughs> <laughs> I love mullet, marmite, and mullet. Okay. So, <laughs> what got me right? You can get it in any color, but only in grey and black. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> any colour but grey and black. Just grey and black, yeah. Which is not very Santa Cruz-y. I, I love it when they do big colours, you know? Yeah. Love it when they big do a yellow yeah. or a pink. I'm into that. This is a bit um, muted. But basically, yeah, they've added the glove box as with previous models and it's now size specific geometry. So yeah, loving that. And then over to Nuke Proof. Now it's not a new bike. Now you, you've ordered one of these, well, haven't you? I've potentially you've made me incredibly one, yes. jealous. I got the blue one with the push rear shock coil. Mm. I've never ridden a coil that much really. I think I've ridden it once on a bike. Mm. So I'm looking forward to having a coil on a bike. But the colours look good, don't oh, they? Yeah. The purple looks yeah. great. <laughs> the silver, apparently, or the white is your favourite. No, the favorite. white, I yeah. want the white. So um, in case you haven't heard, Nuke Proof have just dropped the Sprung collection, which is basically limited edition colourways and basically working with um, more specialist coil rear suspension. So you've got an EXT, you've got a Push 11.6, which you've just ordered in the blue, um, and you've got a Fast as well. And they've used this sort of limited run to bring out a limited uh, reactor as well, which isn't a coil, it's air. They said it's better with air, but it's a limited edition black and red to match the new RockShox Super Deluxe. So uh, yeah, super pretty. Yeah. Like super to see the <laughs> super, super, super pricey, pro, too pro for me. probably as well. But if you're into some niche uh, coils, then it's yeah, looking well good, isn't it? Um, and then on the sort of smaller side, we've got Makoff have released some ride protection. Uh, now I actually was out on this at the weekend. You were on your hardtail. I was on my hardtail. Yep. I was on my scout, and I've checked this out. I've just stick it up my uh well ride protection from muck off stick it up with some punky kind of um detailing and they've brought out a couple of packs uh you've got a day of the shred which Ooh. i believe you've ordered i've ordered you? two of those and and the punk yeah. one and there's the lightning bolts and also the camo. And basically it's 89.99 will give you a set which will cover and protect the top tube and the underside of the down tube, the seat stay and the chain stay. And you can get some extra things which are on your cranks as well. And it comes with some little sort of stickers that protect uh, rubbing from your cables. Mm as well so Pretty interested cool. to see them yeah. come into the market with that sort of thing makes me think what else have they got well, I, I think they've got loads up there Steve, yeah, don't, they, <laughs> don't say anything <laughs> don't say anything <laughs> say nothing careful you and uh, one final bit of news here Richie released the Zeta GX gravel wheels so this is an alloy specific wheel it's 650B or 700C They've got a star ratchet hub with 36 points of engagement. It's disc and through axle specific, 25 mil internal and $599 or euros, depending so, on where you sounds live. Sounds like that's right up my street. I think yeah. they'll go quite nicely on my Giga. With Digger. your, Digger. <laughs> with your new Fox taper yeah, card. Yeah, sheesh, going, I'm going full gravel. I just had rigid. I think you're spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the news. I absolutely love bike caves. Yeah, it yeah. is time for bike caves, where we just basically look in people's garages, garages and stuff yeah. and comment on them. Mm -hmm. you, you'll like this. I you, love you, this. You made a bike cave for GMBN, uh, did you I did, not? yeah. I built one in lockdown, you first like lockdown. You 3D print a logo and all sorts. Oh, I did kind of did think, I didn't kind of, no, it? I built you all that stuff. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Well, um, what we've got here is a bike cave sent in by Justin from Surrey in the UK. He said this is his happy place. Oh, it definitely it's looks happy to me. Yeah, Look combination of workshop and spin studio, full beer fridge. I don't know if he's having beers after a spin. That's a recipe for disaster. Um, and loads of storage. So, um, yeah, I, have I a look. I love it. Bikes hanging up. Mm. Every All your tools are there so you know where they are, not in a mm. drawer. Uh, Lawn mowers stacked Two on top as well. of them, yeah. Electric and I guess that's a... I don't know, McCall? Yeah, it could be a petrol I don't know, one. I like yeah. it. I don't know what it is, a, but I like it. A <laughs> but he is safe, right? He's got a fire extinguisher there. Yeah, if like that's it. in case he spins up too many RPMs yeah. on that what bike. Yeah. Um, I'm loving this LED light underneath. Yes. Um, if you like get a little closer look up on that, 
He's got Go he's on. got all of his tools and a little LED light, which I'm not sure is necessary, but I love it. No, it's necessary. I've got them. I've got them down. And <laughs> they shine on my feet. Really? I got LEDs need that shine lighters. on my feet and over my tools. You need down lights for your feet, you do, do you? Yeah. No, if you drop a, a like a little screw or whatever, you can find it. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. And a kick. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but he's got a little cable wire where he's put all of his... Um, oh, is that a cable wire? Yeah, I think it's a cable wire, and that means that all of his tools are in there, but you can still, they're sort of tucked away like a pocket, oh. but you can still see the underside, so you know which tool you're reaching for. Really? I like that. Look at that. I like that a lot. Justin, that was not lost on me. No, that that's is a good. cracking bike cave. And don't forget, if you've got a bike cave that you want us to have a look at, then do upload it down, the uploader will be in the description below. Let us know. And also top mods and uh, some rewind old tat as well. Doddy Ooh, likes that. He likes that. He likes that. Well, okay, it's comments time. And last week, I'm sure you watch the show every week. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you definitely watch yes, that every week. But last week we were talking about the Rock Shocks. I uh, basically um, have brought out the release valves on the back. Oh you know, yes, no, I do know channel. about this mm -hmm. scandal going on. Scandal mm. and you know obviously Fox did it first and they are a little bit upset about it. Yeah. So um, yeah. we've got some comments on that topic from last week and we've got Andreas uh, Brandstetter here said, oh man, had these bleed valves on my motocross bike fork back in the 90s, so not new and not worth dragging to court. What are you saying? Because you, you race motocross, don't you? Yeah, well, I've done enduro, but I... Have you seen them I know on it's the not, back? Yeah, I've seen them. It's not are new, but it's good to bring into the mountain bike world. Mm. Yeah, it does help a lot. And to drag to court, mm, well, it's up to them, really. I know it's it is, but do you smart, think they're the me. same? Do you think these valves are the same as those 90s Just fork valves? Probably, yeah, maybe. Purging that, maybe. Just, I don't know. Maybe. Get rid of that excess air. Well, Zedian as well also said, I've got those on my Devo Onyx forks, uh, have the bleed valve too. And also Eric Godfrey yeah, agreeing that his one. Devo has had that air bleed valve for years, adopted from the moto world. Rock shocks and forks, uh, Fox are just copying them in the MTB world. Yeah. <gasps> Mic drop from well, there. Well, it depends on where you put this bleed valve. <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah, because their chamber could be, I don't know, Lower down, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe the bleed, the bleed valve does look very different, well, sort of different on the Devo, um, but I don't know, it's still doing the same thing, isn't yeah. it? He's right. We got Frank um, Rich, Rich, Richard. Ricard, Ricard. Maybe? Frank Ricard. I have bleed ports on my 09 Boss forks. Yeah, yeah wow. See? That's an oldie. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the 09 ones. I've seen the 2015 ones, which you need to use uh, like a two and a half mil Allen key okay. to sort of um, see, open different. and bleed. That's a bit different. Yeah, see, you wouldn't go to court with that because you've got to use a tool, not your finger. But yeah. And then um, Mongo and Goofy. <laughs> Nice name. Uh, wow, these guys should go around uh, the NSU Museum near Germany. There are so many old forks for bikes and were invented in the early 1900s that are now being reinvented and people are suing each other for these things that have existed for years. As early as the yeah. 1900s. You haven't got any vintage motorbikes, have you? No, Nothing wish. Nothing vintage-y? No, no, wish. If I had the room and the money. <laughs> 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 and the time. Yeah. Um, Another one here from Gabe C who said, I totally get the passion behind protecting uh, proprietary tech, but I have to believe that this far along the evolution of mountain bike, it is not unimaginable that different R&D teams could come up with the same or similar tech, honestly. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. You can't go, oh, we should do that. Let's put it there. <laughs> In the same place. But it does look very, very similar. It does look very, very similar. That's very why similar. they've taken them to court, because it is, looks very similar. Yeah, and the problem is, is the same. if it's not been patented, then they've not got a leg to stand on. Oh, they've got on. no leg to stand on, yeah. But we'll see. Um, also, we were talking a little bit about Flight Attendant, because it's yeah. just come out on the Canyon, um, and it was a Spectral Limited Edition Flight Attendant. And it was on a short travel, and Doddy said, well, I don't think it should be on short travel. I think it should be. What are you saying? So, I... Do you know, you know about yeah, flight Yeah, I do, yeah, I do. I, I, mm, my... Short travel or long travel or 
either or. I think it'll work more on a longer travel fork. Yeah, Why or a rear shock. Because there's just so much more going on. You, yeah. you can adjust it. So if it's going to blow through, you could kind of know where it can go to, or you can stop it where it is. But with a short one, there's not much room for it to... Yeah, to you know. don't think it makes much of yeah. a difference. It's a tiny shock. Interesting. Well, the comments are actually pretty divided on this, and I'll just leave you with one comment um, to sum it up from Lorenzo, who said, well, if the AXS flight attendant tech tweaks suspension uh, settings on the fly, any trail bike, regardless of travel, will benefit. Maybe it's just up to the rider how much they will tolerate when it comes to suspension tech and setup. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a bit picky. And I just like I, I, my suspension set up right no matter what. Yeah, and also I wouldn't take advice from me. My advice <laughs> is always rock solid. It is. <laughs> it is. Why is it? I don't know. I just, just don't like a, a saggy hard bike. Ride. <laughs> No one likes a saggy bike. <laughs> and on that bombshell, that is all we've got time for today. Blake, thank, thank you, you for joining much. me. Thank Hope you. it wasn't too scary. No, it wasn't scary. It was You've quite been, fun, actually. Been a nerd for a short period of time. Yeah, now I can go out feeling more brainy. <laughs> you can feel that way, yeah. for sure. Yeah, well done. Thanks. All right, guys, well, let us know what you think down in the comments below about our topic today, and hopefully, we'll see you next week.